To me, the rap industry and the NBA are like two parallel universes, so I compare rappers to NBA players. Let's just get straight into it, man. First, I will talk about the most obvious one. You got Drake and LeBron. These two have been dominating the game since they have entered the game, and I explained this concept in my last video, so let's just roll the clip. Drake is one of the most adaptive artists of all time. Like, I see him as the LeBron of hip hop. LeBron can be on any team and elevate that team. Drake isn't the most gifted rapper when it comes to rapping ability. Same as LeBron when it comes to shooting. He's not the best shooter or even close to be. He still can hang as the best basketball player as Drake can hang as the best hip hop artist. Drake and LeBron are both very dominant talents and very versatile talents. The longevity has been proven. They've been top five uh, in a top conversation for so long now. It wouldn't even seem right if niggas took him out. Drake been on top of the game. LeBron been on top of the game. Simple as that. Next up, I have the best shooter of all time, Stephen Curry. He came into the game in a very unique way and changed the entire league. We have never seen a player that is so dominant behind the three-point line. Now we see a lot of players trying to capitalize from the same concept. So, I felt like the best rappers to match the influence was the Trap Goats, Future, and Young Thug. Young Thug and Future individually are the most impactful and influential artists in trap music. Everyone after them has some form of influence from them, and sometimes it's very direct. You got your baby slimes and your baby kudos. Same way you got your baby curries, Steph and the Trap Legends has both paved the way and others follow. Because when it comes to Future flows in a rap game and Young Thug's creativity in a trap game, I feel like Young Thug and Future brought the fun into the trap game because before then it was like mad serious like you hit ti or gucci man or jeezy they talking about the streets and shit but nah thug and future like they got they having fun in the studio i just fucked your bitch in some gucci flip flops like bro they was not doing that bro like bar of the century come on next up we have the goat Kendrick Lamar, and we have Kawhi Leonard. It's pretty obvious that Kawhi Leonard can be the best NBA player in the world, but the only thing setting him back is his availability. Seeing what he adds to a team and what he can bring to the table individually is a master of his craft. He could do any and everything on the court from locking up the best players to giving the best defender's problem on the offensive end. Kawhi has struggled with injury to stay healthy and active on the court, similar to how it feels when Kendrick Lamar takes a huge hiatus before dropping his album. But to be optimistic, when Kendrick does drop and when Kawhi is fully healthy playing on the court, they never underperform, bro. Both has unbelievably mastered their craft to a T. Although Kendrick gets respect as a GOAT, if he was consistently giving us the quality albums he produces, I feel like there wouldn't be many people saying Cole and Drake is better. Same with Kawhi with the top five conversation. Because honestly, bro, there is a clear top three in the 2010 era of, it's of LeBron, KD, and Steph. I feel like that nigga could be number two. But hey, hey, look, a healthy Kawhi, if he was healthy throughout his whole career, bro, he can be top two, bro. I don't know if that's a bad... Nah, that's not a bad take. If that's a bad take to you, you don't know ball, bro. And as simple as that. Kendrick is better than Cole, and he's better than Drake in my eyes. But a lot of people tend to put him on the lower tier of both because he don't drop or he's not as active as them two. I guess people just forget about how great he is. Speaking of Cole, that's the next person we're going to have a comparison to. Cole is mentioned to be a bronze level rapper compared to Drake and Kendrick. Who the bronze in me behind Drake and Dot, yeah, them niggas is superstars to me. As humble as Cole can be, he shouldn't disregard himself like that. I feel like that statement is something you don't see often or at all for rappers or NBA players. But that made my decision to compare him to KD. Look, KD is an amazing player, and honestly, he a freak of nature. A seven foot walking bucket Ooh. with a deep bag? That's insane, bro. Like, you got this seven foot nigga moving like a guard, shooting over anybody because nobody's as tall as him. It don't make sense. The reason I see him as J. Cole is because J. Cole labeled himself as a bronze, and that's what I'm doing for KD, unfortunately. KD has yet to prove that he is that guy that leads the team to victory, and he is okay with not being a team leader. The top three of that era would be LeBron, Steph, and KD, but as the two legends, LeBron and Steph, battled it out, every finals for five years straight, KD took a back seat and wasn't seeing the position to compete and win until he teamed up with Stephen Curry. Him holding himself back from being a leader to a winning team holds him back from the two. The comparison between Cole and KD is more of a confidence thing than anything. Shit, that nigga could be better than Braun if that nigga actually took a step to 
be the leader of the team, but he didn't want to take the leadership role. I feel like not being the leader of your team is going to forfeit you to being over LeBron and Steph, who was clear leaders of every team they've been on. Look, man, for my next comparison, oh my God. I'll be talking about AD. Anthony Davis, the brow. Similar to Kawhi Leonard, AD has top five potential. Unfortunately, bro, just never healthy, bro. This nigga cannot stay healthy to save his life right now. Unfortunately, bro has to be the most injury prone motherfucker on this list. Oh, even in the league, AD is one of the most talented players in the game when healthy and may be the best big man of this era if he actually played 70 games a season for like five seasons straight. For a big man, being able to be so versatile is one of the rarest instances in the NBA. For me personally, my AD comparison is ASAP Rocky. Because Rocky is really one of the most versatile artists of the past decade. It's pretty impossible to name an artist that he can't make a song with. And I can't say that about 99% of the artists, bro. Name another nigga that can work with Danny Brown, Playboy Cardi, Nas, Skrillex, Tame Impala, and Chief Keef. Most of them niggas are nothing alike. Where Rocky thrives in versatility, he also thrives in creativity and talent. But where he thrives in creativity and talent, he lacks in dropping fucking music. On this day, it's almost been 2,000 days since he dropped an album. That's more than fucking Kendrick Lamar. But yeah, both of these artists has let availability stop them from their greatness. Next up, we have two of the shiftiest motherfuckers in their respective lane. Now, anybody that know ball should know who I'm talking about. And that's Kyrie Irving, bro. Oh, you know, I heard this nigga rap will understand this one too. My Kyrie comparison is J.I.D. These motherfuckers got unlimited bags, bro. Kyrie never run out of moves, bro. And it's crazy just watching him. Like, this nigga literally play defense on offense. I think Iman Shumper said something like that. Like, he don't go in and plan what he's about to do. He moves with the game and flows so well with the game. He has one of the most beautiful skill sets in basketball. Easily one of the most skilled players I've ever seen. Nah, this is one of my favorite plays. Watch this. Split. Ugh. Oh my goodness. Like, how do you even think of that, bro? And that's how I feel about J.I.D. When it comes to his flow, bro, he has unlimited flows, bro. Sling slung wood number in the hood. Sister mother freaky fucker kidney punch a willy wonka pussy. Yo, he done, go. Oh, his bag is just incredibly strong bro like i said Kyrie has a counter for all defense and never run out of moves and this nigga jid just never run out of flows bro rhyme schemes ridiculous lyricism at a high level alliterations going crazy no glazing though every time i hear jid rap he always brings something new that i never heard next up we have two of the most influential young stars for the youth we're talking about and that is playboy cardi and Ja Moran. Just let a brother cook real quick, okay? Cardi and Ja are having a great start in their career with both showing their talents in their selective fields. But when they got popular, they started acting man different. Ja Wick ain't beating the you from the burbs allegations. While he act like he was raised in the hood, creating controversy by flashing guns on social media, hanging around the wrong people, and reenacting this hood rapper lifestyle. Bro trying to make it to the hood, not out the hood. Now with Cardi, Bro came in the game with heavenly production, angelic ass music. Then he started to turn his music into demon music out of nowhere. How the fuck we get from this? Yo, yo. Uh, uh. Shawty been back like the babes. Cause with the dope like the AIDS. Uh. I'm in the kitchen go crazy. To this. When I go to sleep, I dream about murder. Now this motherfucker acting up too. His songs sound like he ready to murder the first person he sees when he exits the studio. He's been getting locked up for choking a pregnant girlfriend for drug and gun charges and all. No matter what these two get into, Ja is still the youth's favorite player. And Cardi fans are just Cardi fans. <laughs> Next up, we gotta talk about two of my motherfucking niggas from St. Louis, man. And that is Jason Tatum and Smino. These are two talents from St. Louis that I feel like have potential to be at the top of the game. Smino really has what it takes to lead the new generation, but I'll save that topic for another video. And I feel like JT does too. As Jason Tatum already proved himself to be capable of having deep playoff runs, he is destined for a great career. It's clear as day that JT keeps getting better and better and better by the years. It's similar to Smino to me because Smino has three incredible albums and is destined for an incredible discography. And every time he releases music, you hear that it sounds even more polished than before. And the 
proven never stops. Moving on, I feel like Shea Gilgis Alexander and Lil Yachty are perfect for the positions that they are at when it comes to the timing in their career. They have both been good, but underrated at what they're doing. But the past year, these two have seen heights we have never expected to come so quick. Lil Yachty is currently going on a crazy run this year. He's been dropping plenty of music. Starting off with the unexpected alternative album, Let's Start Here, which is one of my favorites of the year so far. But it don't even stop there. Bro has been constantly dropping bangers after banger, such as the track with Cole Special Recipe. You got the solo step and creep boys that was promoted on the AMP cipher. Even Strike went crazy. Slide and Tesla was crazy too. While SGA came up dropping fucking 30 points a game. Like SGA was going so crazy last season. The year prior, he was great. Him hooping on a clip but show solid potential. He got traded to the Thunder and was putting up good numbers with CP3. But that last season was phenomenal, bro. Faith in his growth as a player. But bro, what just happened at a blink of an eye? Lastly, similar to the last comparison, I have two talents that has been very, very slept on for their entire career, but both have put in so much work and is now getting more and more shined by the day. These two I'm talking about here are De'Aaron Fox and Lucky. Lucky has been on top of the underground scene for quite some time now. He has never reached heights we have seen others in his lane make due to not having a hit record, but he always carried a loyal fan base. This fan base has been expanded widely through the merge of TikTok. He is finally getting huge recognition. Aaron Fox and the Kings went to the playoffs in 2023 for the very first time since 2006. And they even took the Warriors to game seven after having the best season he ever had. Although these two aren't the biggest in their respective lanes they are definitely receiving the recognition that they always deserve in this video it's clear that i only mentioned current rappers and current nba players if you would like to see more of this series let me know because i look i still got more in the tank also who do you feel like would be an accurate comparison and why as always make sure you have a wonderful day receive a lot of blessed money and positivity for the day tomorrow and forever spike league tuning out love y'all folks man